Okay, we just got a package and there's no writing on the package. It's waiting for you with like a winky face. This is the only thing we've seen on the trail. This is turning into one stupid treasure hunt. It's in the middle of the night. Wait, Dave. It's in the desert. What? The coordinates lead us to the desert. Dude, this is actually getting kind of crazy. All right, guys, we've been driving for, I don't know, like two or three days now. We're down to our reserve tank and uh, down to like our last jug of water. Um, we've been able to charge most of the equipment just off the car battery right now, but here we are. This doll sent us to what seems to be a dead end in the middle of the desert. I know you're thinking, how can there be a, a dead end in the middle of the desert? Well, I'm gonna show you. So I could keep on walking down this dirt path, turn my headlamp on. There's nothing for hours and hours and hours. And then, Connie's in the truck. We get here. The road just stops. And we don't know what to do. Alright guys. The lights are on in this place. I don't really want to go inside. Connie is unsure. But this is literally where the coordinates have led us. And we're kind of at the end of our rope here. So. I'm just going to check it out. I'll give Connie the camera and uh, I'm gonna go in there. Wish me luck. Who's here? I just f***ing kicked you. <sighs> Who's in there? <sighs> Fuck, there's a closet, there's a closet. Last meal. You gotta be f kidding me. All right, guys. I think we're in the clear for tonight. I'm sweating. Connie's inside here. There's good news and bad news. What's the good news? Um. We have food, and okay. the bad news 
Where'd is that the doll is definitely haunted. Where'd you get the food? Thanks to our freaky little friend, it looks like we have an actual place to stay for tonight, which is a welcome change because sleeping in the Land Rover is perfectly fine, but it's been getting kind of old the last couple of days. So um, in here, our last meal seems to be marshmallows, some Reese's bars, Hershey's, graham crackers, some pre-cooked rice that uh, I guess we're gonna nuke. This place does have a microwave. And to go along with it, two packs of Korean jjigae. Wow. And some Hebrew National Franks. So I think that this is potentially a stupid joke from the demon child because we have some like Hebrew food and some Korean food and I'm Jewish and Connie's not Korean. She's Chinese. So I think that this is maybe like, man, is there some, are there racist demons out there? Hmm. All right, so jokes aside, we are going to enjoy this food, but if you think that we're done here, we're not, because behind this last meal sign says GeoTor Road. We're not on GeoTor Road, according to the GPS, um, so we're going to have to plug that in and figure out what that even means. But I have a feeling that this is yet another leg of this wild goose chase. I don't even know why we're doing this anymore. We have some free food. So, I don't know if the mic is picking up. It's incredibly windy out here. It's not terribly uncomfortable. It's, it's chilly. Uh, well, honestly, the, like, the one thing looming over my head right now is that I don't know where we're going. Um, we have GPS, so I know where I am. Um, we do have enough fuel in the truck, but again, every step we take is getting further away from the truck. And I kind of want to call it at this point. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get back to the truck, drive down the trail a little further, see what we can find. Got to, I, I don't even, I don't know if we're going to use this, dude. Dude. What the hell? 
We have not seen another car for like three hours. What does this mean? I don't even know if I'm holding this correctly. Is this Chinese? This is Chinatown. This is bullshit. We come all the way out here from LA. The cl I mean, the closest Chinatown I know is back in LA. Oh babe, you wanna go back to your hometown? It's just me right now. I'm back in LA. I'm in Chinatown. It's actually funny. Connie's from here. She was born here. And I, again, I have, I have no clue what I'm supposed to be looking for. Chinatown isn't huge, but again, there's all these buildings, all these alleyways. I don't know like where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do or who I'm supposed to ask. That stupid note just said Chinatown. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I made some friends with the locals. We're gonna try to figure things out. I also got this really cool bracelet. I'll give this to Connie. Um, all right. This hat is actually super useful right now because it's very, very sunny. Um, but enough fun. We gotta find what we're looking for. I don't even know what the f we're looking for. All right. I feel. I feel like I've walked down every street and I have no idea. Uh. Hold on. Did you leave this here? Well, there you have it, guys. The creepy-ass scavenger hunt that Vero sent us on has finally come to an end. And uh, I guess it's all over their newest workhorse release, their Vero Workhorse Hooligan, which is what I'm wearing on the wrist right now. Now, specs-wise, this is identical to my Vero Workhorse Backcountry. Uh, this is more of like a field watchy vibe with that olive drab uh, and the splashes of orange. This is gray pretty much everywhere, matte gray, even down to the strap. And there's some splashes 
of yellow uh, with one of the pushers and then the handset and then of course that Vero smiley face logo. Dude, I'm exhausted. I'm going to take a nap for about maybe like a week and then we're going to come back in the office and start producing more content. But this was so fun. We're going to do some quick specs uh, about this watch because again, we've already reviewed the Vero Workhorse Backcountry, but um, we will talk about the dimensions and everything right now. 49.5 millimeter lug to lug, 45.5 millimeter case diameter, 13.5 millimeters thick. Their spec sheet, we're gonna throw it on the screen right now. It even shows the dimensions of the pushers and the crowns. Now the strap, which I actually really like these Velcro nylon straps, uh, it is super convenient. And again, I've been wearing my Vero workhorse, like my personal one nonstop for pretty much like two or three months. And, and there's like no wear and tear on it. It accommodates, I think a six and a half to an eight and a half inch wrist. And I'm like just under eight and it's, it's perfectly fine. Now this is powered by a Miyota 6S21 quartz chronograph. And you do get a very nice sweep from the chronograph hand when you clear it. You're getting a 120 meter water resistance rating and both crowns do thread so you don't have to worry about water getting into the watch now the coating on these workhorses is Cerakote so it's like a ceramic coating over stainless steel and of course a sapphire crystal now this specific one is limited uh, this is I believe retailing for $425 and it's limited to 150 pieces now here's what's awesome. They are offering my viewers a coupon code. So type in CREEPY10, we're gonna put it on screen here, all caps, CREEPY10, and you can go and save yourself some money on one of these watches. Uh, guys, this was a blast to film. We love doing this kind of creative content. It was a whole lot of fun working with Vero on this. We look forward to producing more of this kind of content for the channel. And uh, I just wanna thank Vero for making this possible. I wanna thank my team uh, here at the Time Teller channel for, uh, you know, trudging along and, and, and working on this project. I want to thank Connie for being part of this as well because dragging her out into the wilderness and, and shooting these creepy scenes. She, she was a trooper and uh, yeah, we, we just had a blast. So thank you so much to all my viewers as well because we do this content for you at the end of the day. So um, yeah, we love you and um, yeah, go ahead, support the companies that support me. You know, Vero made this possible. Uh, they supported us along the way and um, yeah, just, j Please check them out. And there you have it, guys. Again, this this long, it, it, dude, it feels like an eternity, us running around. It's finally come to an end, and I'm going to take a little bit of a break. But now I have to actually film another episode because we're about to be on the Teddy Balthazar channel. So... Um, just kidding. No, no breaks. No breaks. So there you have it, guys. Another Time Teller episode in the books. Go ahead, check out the Beverly Hills Shrink channel. That's the newest channel that we have on the Time Teller brand's roster, and it's hosted by my dad, a neuropsychiatrist and a psychopharmacologist. He goes over some true crime. He might go over some conspiracy theories in the future, and he talks about... I don't know, some, some pretty heavy topics, and he has some really deep insight into these things. So go ahead, uh, click the link in the description below and subscribe to his channel. If you haven't subscribed here yet, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment, and I will catch you on the next one. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Tall, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>